once you have the washer on and the keyway on, take this gear bevel side facing towards you and kind of wiggle it around in place. It has to slide out under the other gear like this and then bring it in, line it up, slide it on. Now some of these are going to have to be tapped. I have a plastic hammer to tap it here. All you want to do is gain just enough to get this clip in. The other thing you have to understand is when you're tapping on it, this shaft will get pushed that way and it won't reach. So tap the shaft on this side, make sure it comes out all the way. Get this E-clap, this uh, circle clip on there. Make sure it's in the groove. We want to see that clip sit down in that groove all the way. Now, once you have that clip, you're going to want to look at the back of the gear here and see where there's clearance. And you're going to want to tap it back the other way until you, you're sure it's all the way back and stop. Okay, assemble your cover like this. Make sure that you know which bolt goes where, because on this one, this bolt's longer. See it's sticking out? This bolt's flush. I actually got a shorter bolt in here. It's flush with the surface. Also notice that this shaft right here goes all the way through. It's been ground off just a bit, so it fits flash, flush with the cover. Set two small balls of clay or whatever you have. Okay, put the cover on with the clay in there. We're going to bolt it tight. First, we're going to get it lined up before we let, lock it down. Both bolts. Actually, Allen head cap screws. Just snug. This we're not even going to put on. I'm going to take it back off and look and see where the clay came out at. And as you can see, there's plenty of room. The clay did not squash all the way. So there's plenty of room for that pulley, between that pulley and the cover. Lead screw gears. Everything's running good. Take it back apart. And then we'll put the belt and the motor on. When you remove the motor out of the box, it's going to look like this. It'll come with the pulley installed and the mount installed. Sometimes this screw has to be removed for clearance here. Uh, this screw and this screw over here are your horizontal adjustments. You're going to have to use this to adjust the travel and a little heads up about fitting these motor mounts. If your motor is trying to go in sideways like this, it means that these two slots may have been cut to slightly closer. Uh, not all legs are the same, and so we're constantly trying to adjust these bolt studs to fit. Uh, this time around, we had to surface the outside. Sometimes you have to surface the inside. Uh, okay, with the motor ready to go on, place your belt in place. Take your motor, mount still loose. Put it in the belt. Line up the holes for the mount, the studs I mean, like that. Come around the front side, throw on the washers. Spin on the nuts. Snug and back off about a oh, quarter turn just so it can slide. 
Place a flat file or a flat bar here. Place another one there. Rest your palm on this. Get your fingers underneath this and lift up. Snug these bolts in the front. That's what causes the motor to tip in the right direction. After you get that tight, which I've already done, so I had to do it several times. Actually, I did it three times. Check your belt, belt. Make sure it's running true. Check how close it is to this surface right here. This belt should be just about touching that surface, maybe even touching it. If it's too far this way, loosen the, or too far that way, loosen the Allen screws up here. Take a piece of wood and a little block or something and tap the motor to go that way until the belt just touches. Or this way until it just stops rubbing. Tighten the Allen set screws again that are up front through the slots. Tighten the Allen set screws through the slots. Here. The Allen set screws are right there and right there. You tighten them through these holes. They're these screws always right in the way. Some people find it easier to take the lead screw off. If you have ball head Allens, they work good. It just so happens that I can actually get in here with my Allen wrench just enough to do it. This is a U.S. size. These are U.S. size nuts as well. The rest of it's going to be metric. Move that motor that way and that way until you get the belt lined up. So it looks like that. The belt has to be right up against the housing. Notice the belt is also flush here. The metal is actually me. It's right at the same. The belt is exactly the width of the pulley. And it's all just zoop right there as tight as it'll get. I put two-sided tape on the back of the switch. It doesn't come that way. But I keep it around. Uh... You can get put some two-sided tape on the back of the switch and stick it wherever you want. I'm going to try rooting it this way this time. There's a new one. See if it'll go through there. Looks like it might. Probably should have put it in before I put the motor in. There it goes. So we're going to stick this right here. I think this would be good right here. Let's try it and see what we think. I kind of like that. Stick that there. I highly recommend you mount your control unit well above the mini lathe. Put it somewhere above. Make sure that it's out of the way of all the metal filings, out of the way of oil, water, coolants, anything that may be blown off the lathe. If you put it beside your lathe or below your lathe, you will surely eventually be buying a new board for your control unit. Plug in the motor, plug in the control unit, make sure all the wires are away from the motor belt and stuff, because you're just doing tests, you don't want them getting cut in there, or wound up and torn off, because they will, and then control unit's on, it went through self-diagnostic, here let me show you, we turn it off, We'll burn out all the electricity. We're gonna leave the switch in the on position. We'll turn it on. It goes to PD, that's a fault. The switch is not in the start spot. You have to put the switch to the stop. Then it'll go through startup diagnostics and then it's ready. So, 300 RPM, 1500, 2800, 4500 RPM. Notice how smooth it's running. See how the belt's running right up tight against the metal from the spindle head? That's where you want it. Now we're going to do a couple other tests before we put it the rest of the way together. Okay, we've blacked out the spindle and put a piece of reflective tape on it. The speed knob is set at run. This one happens to run, uh, well, 300 right now is what the digital motors running and we're gonna get a reading on what it's actually turning it's 
So 300 is, mm, that's not very good. Not 75. 75 to 300 on the motor. Now this lathe happens to be in low speed right now. Let's go look at, set this up. See, it's still 300. We'll set it up at 1,000 on the digital display. Looks like 271. 270. There's a random extra reading in there. Okay, let's go up to... These, these actually are going to be wrong. We'll set it at 4,500 by the motor. Spindle is running in low gear. One thousand let's say twelve hundred. Okay, let's go to high speed. Okay, this is high. We're gonna run it. We'll start out at 300 on the motor. One seventy six. Two thousand on the motor. Twelve hundred on the spindle, it's almost two to one. Four thousand on the display for the motor. Two thousand four hundred and twenty one on the spindle. So let's see what our top speed is on the spindle. That's four thousand five hundred on the motor. Two thousand. Two thousand seven hundred on the spindle. That's pretty fast. Much faster than you need to go. Let's do a torque test. Let's see if we can stop it. Gauge it in low gear. And then we'll run it. At slow speed. What did we get last time? Seventy six RPMs. There is a secondary, but it's seventy six. See what happens when we grab it. No matter how hard I try to hold it, I can't stop it at that speed. So this is your difference. We'll go ahead and put it back together. 2,000 cut.